I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to take a look at on close and on unload of our form events, uh, which we can use in order to message the user when they close a form. And in some cases, we can even sort of stop them from closing the form if certain conditions are met. Let's get to it. Okay, guys, so this is a pretty fun one, a very simple exercise today, very quick one, but very, very useful. Uh, you can see I got this uh, access uh, form here in this file that I created. It's got a candy table that you have seen before and a uh, very simple table. We're not going to do anything with the records today except for flip through them on a form and in order to do that we're going to go to the create ribbon. We're going to open that form wizard. Our table is already selected there. I'm just going to select all of the available fields and I'll stick that in a columnar form and I'll hit next and uh, I guess we'll call it candy form and that will do it for what we need to do today so we're going to make a very very simple form we're just going to take the default output here we're not going to style it or anything um, and you can see this is what access gives you and this is a columnar form and you can scroll through your records by simply pressing on the navigation buttons down below and we can go to the design by right clicking on the tab and going to design view or you can do it on the ribbon up above. Now you can click on the black square or click on the gray area outside of the form in order to get the form uh, properties once you have the property sheet open or you can select it from the uh, selector on the property sheet there and what we're going to look for is the event tab and the event tab has all of the things that can happen on a form and so this is what we call event driven programming and so we're going to choose the on close event to show what we can do when a form is closed and so this is going to happen when the X button is pushed on the form or if you do control W and close the form or something like that and so um, this is going to open up the little code window for uh, Visual Basic uh, for applications and it's already started a, a subroutine for us and we can use this subroutine uh, you can see that in the selectors up above it says form and then the other one says close so one is the the objects that that is going to have the uh, the subroutines or methods and the other one is the event and so the event is close and so you can see that's created this private subform close and here we go so I'll put a, a note up above there and uh, at the top of our procedure and we're really just going to do a one-liner for our form close uh, so we'll do message box um, hey you know you're closing this form and so when whenever this form actually closes it's going to fire this message box which will appear for the user so that they know that something's happening and so this is one way that you can use form close and so uh, maybe you don't you don't want users to close it and you're going to tell them although we're going to come to that a little bit later because we have a better way to stop them from closing it there um, and so uh, what we can do is we can open our form and then we're going to close it using the close button and you can see hey you're closing this form and so that little pop-up happened but you can see that the form still closes and so that is something that we're going to look at using another event called form unload which sort of happens before form close happens in order to see that what we'll do is we'll go again to our form just like we did before and we're going to sort of take a look through our events here and we'll look for the on, on unload event and that is right there you can see it on unload and that's going to give us a nice little um, a little event that we can use 
Again, we click on the ellipsis, click on the code builder, and then click OK. And that will pop us back into our uh, coding screen. And you can see here in the IDE that it started another subroutine, except this one says form unload. And so form unload is something that happens before form close. And so to demonstrate that, what we could do is we could do the same thing. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll um, we'll write another note here saying, you know, <laughs> okay, let's unload our form or something like that, and we'll sh we'll demonstrate that first, and then uh, and then we'll demonstrate on how to prevent um, the the unloading from happening. Uh, so first, what we'll do is again we've got a nice little message box there. We'll minimize our code window. We'll go and uh, uh, right click on our tab and, and go to form view. And then we can scroll through you know, the records just as if a user might be. And then we'll go and close, close our form. And you can see it says unloading. Okay, it's, you know, okay, let's unload our form. And then it says closing. Hey, you're closing this form. So those are two events that happen in sequence. These are the most common ways that we look at the unloading process or closing process. And so um, that's very, very handy for us um, to use. But what if we wanted to actually, you know, depending on some circumstance, uh, we wanted to notify the user but also stop the form from closing on them. So we could do that as well. So we'll go back, uh, we'll click it on our event procedure there and click the ellipsis and you'll notice this time the code window comes up right away because it knows there's already an event there, an event uh, with a sub uh, subroutine on it. And so now we can extend or, or add more to our procedure and we'll say, hey, you know, if our candy type is equal to chocolate, um, so whatever record that the user is on, if it happens to be one that the candy type is chocolate, then we'll say, hey, please don't close this form, or please don't close the form. And, and that will um, show only in the cases where there is chocolate there. So we'll say, please don't close the form when the item type is chocolate. How about that? Okay, so we'll, we'll put that one in there. We'll do a, a VB information type. That's the one with the little, you know, I in it for information. And then the the chocolate uh, at the end here, that's the title of the pop-up uh, for the message box. And so then we'll go, you know, else. So because we still want something to happen if it's not chocolate. So we'll use else. And then we'll say message box. Okay, let's unload this form. Uh, just like we had before. So we'll get the, the message that we did the first time. And so if the candy type is chocolate, then give the message, please don't close the form when it's chocolate. Otherwise, give our original message, okay, unload this form, you know, and, and if, that closes off our if, else, and if block there. And so that's what we want to see. So we'll go back once again and we'll go to, we can right click on the tab and open it in form view and then we can scroll through just like we did before. And we'll scroll through our, um, our candies and if we choose one that is not chocolate, you can see it'll give the, ori the original message saying, okay, let's unload the form. And then it gives the closing message, hey, you're closing this form. And then if we open our form again and we uh, scroll through the records again, just like we did, and we choose one this time that has chocolate, and we go and close our form. So there's our chocolate. That's the candy type. Chocolate. And we'll hit close. And now it says, please don't close the form when the item type is chocolate. Because the type in the record that was there was chocolate. And then it says, hey, you're closing this form. And so at least we, you know, gave a message to the user, please don't close the, the form when it's chocolate. But what if we wanted to actually stop the form from closing? when that condition was there. Well, we can do that too. We'll go back to our on unload event, um, just like we saw here. And you'll notice up here 
that there is a cancel as integer as an argument for this particular um, subroutine. And what we can do is um, we can put cancel equals minus one. And that basically means cancel equals true. Um, and that makes, uh, what that means is it stops the event from proceeding uh, past this point. So if we get a cancel equals minus one, then it won't continue processing and closing the form because it won't make it to the actual close event of the form. Because remember, on unload happens before on close. And so now if I scroll to a chocolate um, item, you can see we get our chocolate message just like we wanted. And if I click OK, the form does not close. And that's exactly what we want to see for that situation. And that's how you use form unload and form close in Microsoft Access.